the more we listen to Hasbro and Wizards of the Coast and look at their press releases and watch their behavior closely, it does look like they're trying to kind of erase early RPG history, which by and large starts with Dungeons and Dragons, right? Because it was kind of the first one. There were some things chain mail before that, but essentially it's the D and D system. Um, and there's also a lot of discussion about, well, you know, artwork versus then versus now versus interior versus mechanics versus all kinds of stuff. And I, I wanted to take a minute to kind of do a side by side comparison of some older stuff and some newer stuff, um, just to kind of get some people a, a chance to to think about things a little bit differently. Um, in particular, uh, let's just take a quick stab at, at a few things, a few uh, things from the monster manual. So if we go back far enough, uh, the monster manual looked like this. this is the one, one of the ones that's on my shelf. Um, this is also on my shelf. So I grabbed sort of old school and new school. And, and if you look at the, the older monster manual, yeah, there's a certain nostalgic charm to the artwork. Um, and yes, some of the other original books had better covers, in my opinion, higher quality covers. But, you know, there's a lot going on with it. And, and it does a lot of cool stuff, but it, it's also kind of nostalgic for people my age who played and, and people who are newer to the game or younger like my kids might look at that and be like okay that that looks like it's kind of designed for kids but it, it was i mean it was designed for kids and, and adults as well but it doesn't necessarily have um what a a modern teenager would look at and go oh that's what i want okay well and and, the, and bringing new players into the game kind of matters right otherwise it dies with gen x and, and nobody cares about it ever again um and uh but if you look at the one on the right, yeah, here's the monster manual and in, in the one that I think I got picked up about a year and a half ago or something. Uh, it's the fifth edition version. I mean, that cover is really actually pretty cool. Uh, it, it doesn't have the same uh, sort of grasp view as some like the, 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 the original Dungeon Master Guide or some of the other artwork that came came along from Larry Elmore and and some of the other guys. But uh, it, uh, it it certainly is a pretty decent shot at a cover with a beholder on it um and uh, uh certainly i i think is is one of the better covers that are running around in, in the modern stuff but if you put it side by side with the the older one the older one doesn't i mean i love it uh, don't get me wrong but it, it's if, I, if you had to pick one today if you were the, the publisher putting a book out and you said okay which one do i want well, you're going to get a certain audience with the older one who has that sort of nostalgia for that sort of stuff. And then you're going to get a much different audience and probably a much larger audience with the, the, the one on some of the newer cover. Otherwise, they'd be printing the old one. Let's go look at the inside. right? So what's on the inside of the thing? So let's check out the Beholder. The inside art in the older ones was cool for the day, right? It was for late 70s, early 80s. This was cool stuff. This was, you know, she hadn't seen these kinds of things before, but that's what a Beholder looked like then. And and here's the newer version of it, right? So, <clears throat> well, I agree. There's mechanics differences. There's certainly some some changes that have come along in the system. Uh, but it, it, like anything else, you know, 40 years ago may not translate to players that were are the same age we were back when we started playing. So I started playing when I was 12 or 13 years old. I might have been a little bit younger than that, but something along those lines. Um, and if you look at a 12 or 13 year old today versus what would have been the case in the early eighties, it might've been 10, uh, but you know, from 82 to 84, 85, what, what a teenager then would have looked at and gone, Hey, that's neat. You know, that, that book fits that the book on the right fits what a, a teenager today would think is neat. And the game mechanics as well. I, I won't say the game mechanics are perfect. I mean, I, I learned on first edition, so I, I, prefer that one uh but there are some things in the modern stuff that that's pretty good too so um what's the whole point to this discussion is is not to say that one edition is right and the other one is wrong uh and players are free to play any edition they want to play i'm not going to force one down your throat uh but what i do think happens more often than it should in the gaming community is people will kind of attack each other for playing an edition that they don't agree with. Oh, you're having fun wrong. You better play first edition or it's not true D and D. Um, but yeah, you know, it's been 50 years, right? So it's been 50 years since the thing came out and, and people today are, are audiences today are just different than they were 50 years ago. 
uh and certainly to get my kids play to play they they when i tried started teaching how to play and i tried some of the first edition stuff they were like yeah, yeah. but then i got some fifth edition books and i got some fifth edition uh character sheets wrapped up for them and they got really interested and now they'll play earlier stuff as well as later stuff because it, it got them involved in the game uh so i'm not saying one edition is right the other one is wrong i'm just saying audiences are different than they were and the people who grew up with with uh, the older stuff like like me and and others um we remember it with a certain degree of nostalgia and there's it's great and there's something to that and i think it's it's cool to to try to pull uh modern audiences and first time players into that older stuff but you know the, one of the reasons i think hasbro uh is going for uh these newer editions you know fifth edition one D D or whatever the new one is it's coming out this year uh, i think it's because they are trying to appeal to that modern audience and grow the number of players <clears throat> now is that a good thing is it a bad thing well from a business perspective you certainly want to grow it from a player perspective i've seen some people say no that's bad i'm like is it really um but uh i will say that i wish hasbro would do more to actually unite the older players and the younger players and stop trying to erase the history that they apparently are actively trying to erase uh and i do hope that the gaming uh community um can come together and, and start to, to stop kind of fighting each other uh but uh um you know it's, it's a game i love and it's a game i can i will continue to play for as long as i'm able to find a gaming table to sit at and i don't care what edition it is if you want me as a player all you got to do is find a spot to fit, you know, you have a game that fits in my schedule. I, I usually will show up. Um, so it, uh, uh, to me, it's, it's yeah, the, the nostalgic stuff has a certain fondness or a certain place. Uh, but, you know, the newer stuff attracts a new audience. And who doesn't want more players? It's, it's Sometimes it's trouble finding a full table full of people to play. And if you're you're hooked on, oh, we've got to play this edition, you've got to play that edition, it's going to limit the number of tables you can you can show up at or you can find uh, open seats at. So um, I don't really have any trouble with fifth edition. There is some stuff in it that I'm like, I'm not sure I would do it that way. But, you know, the only edition I've ever looked at and said, you know what, I, I don't really want to get into that is fourth. And I think we can all agree that was a tragic mistake. Uh, but, you know, I'm hopeful that, that one D&D is not, totally off the rails but we'll see what happens when it actually comes out and yes i know they're going with an online version as well as an offline version um and but if you think again about the modern world we live in versus what happened in the late 70s early 80s people got together at each other's houses more often and i wish they would i wish everybody would get around the same table but that's just not the world we live in anymore so a virtual version is is pretty much necessary i think um if you want to have a game that goes on over an extended period of time uh, and yes, I'd love to get around a gaming table and I have done it. And I think that's a fantastic thing to do. But if you want to continue to play on an ongoing basis, I think you have to have both an in-person and a virtual option. Otherwise it's, it's just sort of difficult. So, um, everybody have a great week. Uh, we'll see, each, see, uh, each other more often. And I will be in uh, dungeon Delvers live streaming game tonight. It's a first edition game over on his channel. Uh, so check it out. It's every Tuesday night. I don't know what day you'll see this video, but uh, every Tuesday night at nine o'clock Eastern, uh, Dungeon Delver has a uh, a live streaming first edition game that I'm playing a fighter called Tarth Nose Rage in. Uh, so uh, everybody have a great day.